for CNU20's theme of old world to new world, I want to share some thoughts about transportation. But not so much how we move around, but what moves us. Jane Jacobs famously instructed readers to find illustrations of life by putting down her book and looking around. The types of creature comforts change a lot over time, but people, not so much. We're drawn to population centers, restaurants, drinking places, we share common pastimes. We don't want to waste our time talking about long trips and short trips, good street design. We want to experience the destination. But we have a real problem. Our culture has allowed designers to focus on the asphalt details instead of the heart of our communities. Humans crave this type of exchange, these type of scenes. And these scenes could be almost anywhere. Country girls, city girls, regular people need to interact. And while trying to get to our choice destinations, we've settled for this. We're almost numb to stop and go traffic. Having put the car at the center of the universe, it's only natural to add more lanes to pump traffic through the destinations. But we don't have to settle for this. So how do we get ourselves into this mess? Well, when scientists thought that our sun and the planets revolved around the Earth, they had to concoct these complex formulas to predict orbits. When they realized the planets actually revolved around the sun, the math sort of fell into place. When engineers put the car at the center of the universe, it's hard to figure out the relation to commuting, schooling, housing, all these things that you see. But when you put the person at the center, the design details accommodating the other components, they sort of fall into place. Now meet my offspring, Aaron and Drew. I have no idea what occupation they'll choose as adults, but they already have common sense observations about city streets and city life. On our last big city adventure, the two of them were mocking the drivers who weren't having any fun walking. Why are these guys driving around in circles, Dad? Regardless of age, what do people see in their mind's eye? What's the love story for the place you call home? I'm going to use this sidewalk here as a canvas to show you everyday examples that might resonate with your city, your small town, or your suburbs. Now first, remember, not everyone on a bike is a bike commuter. With all the propaganda around us about cars owning streets, we forget that riding a bike is fun. It's a fun way to get to that corner cafe. It's a fun way to experience a great historical street like Monument Avenue. If the city or town you love has a railroad, you might have a historic train station. But I'm going to guess that when you take friends to go visit that train station or any other local destination, you want to experience it on your own two feet, not from a super highway that bisects the area. These images here were in a transportation engineering magazine, and they're not. The caption would be something like, Heavily congested corridor with unacceptable average delay per person causes failing levels of service. But these types of gatherings are what people choose to be transported to. A lot can happen in the public realm. You can use it to construct more traffic lanes or let it be an inviting place for people to hang out and spend some money. With access to chalk and mobility on the sidewalk, I, the transportation engineer, can tell you that Drew experienced an acceptable level of service. And businesses, both large and small, win with good, competent street design. When you have various paths to choose from, entire streets can be closed for periods of time. It doesn't harm the community, it helps it. Vendors might like the visibility of car traffic, but foot traffic is what spends the money. Segway tours are becoming more popular across the country. People here are riding through an old canal that was originally surveyed by George Washington. You can't experience that on a high-speed car tour. And these are some other images of why people love the, their city. Using humans as the design vehicle for city and suburban streets isn't just a feel-good academic concept. We like walking. If walking is made preferable through design, we find more areas about our community to love. You can discover that little wayside to read a book during lunch. 
but we look around us and it seems like all is lost. Imagine if private corporations owned and operated roads that were dangerous and created asphalt wastelands like this. For two hours a day, traffic is congested. The rest of the day looks like this, no vibrancy or sense of life. Why are we tolerating this? We've been conned into a love affair with car scale design. Regular people want human scale design. The people here showed up to celebrate an international bike race. This type of thing hits a nerve with people. They get excited. And speaking of excitement, why are these women looking so grumpy? Look, like I said, I'm a transportation professional. I'm fully equipped to tell you that this road provides a very acceptable level of service. But they know better. They're suffering. And that's even without inclement weather. All right, wait, there is hope. People are starting to realize that common sense suggests highways should look very different from local streets. The lawn signs in this image read Save Our Street, SOS. More accurately, maybe they should say Save Our Lives. Is victory in our sights? I'm optimistic. Big deal players like the US Department of Transportation, ITE, and AASHTO are endorsing good common sense in terms of street use and design. That has to be a sign of the apocalypse, right? I'm going to call that victory.